Today, I got my hands on two SUVs that are almost as rare as the Lunar Eclipse itself. In fact, one of these SUVs makes the LX600 look like it's the size of the Toyota RAV4. What is it? The TRD Pro Toyota Sequoia versus the LX600. Now it might seem like an odd intro at first, but stick around to the end of the video where I will explain why I'm comparing these two vehicles. Okay, so let's take a look at the front end of this super rare TRD Pro Sequoia. So because it's a TRD Pro, the first thing you notice is that old school Toyota written across the grill. Above that, you might notice these three amber lights. Interesting story about those is you might see those types of lights on things like the Ford Raptor and other full size, athletic SUVs and trucks. And usually it's because of anything that's bigger than 70 inches in length needs those to go with you know, industry standards. The Sequoia is just slightly smaller at 69 inches. And because of that, they don't actually need it, but Toyota put it on there anyway. And I think that's pretty cool to make it look like the rest. The rest of the grill, we have some really big hatching here. So all of these pieces do seem very sturdy and thick and big with a little bit of a wave to it. And as we go sort of closer to the bottom of the bumper, it becomes a little bit more of that rugged textured plastic. Underneath, we have these little fog lights, as I'm pretty sure they are, um, on the bottom to really light up the light. And we even have this little camera in the center of the grill. Now there is a light bar across the center of the grill that is way too bright to be able to film on camera, but it is there on just the TRD Pro. In terms of lights, we have this textured daytime running light. In person, you can see some detail there. So there is almost like a star light look to it. Further away, it just sort of looks like frosted glass. The hood itself does have some vision lines going in that V shape and these big vented or fake vented TRD Pro logos sort of on those top corners. Okay, so over to the refined front end of the LX600, where we see a little bit less rugged and a little bit more refinement. So right away, you can see we have a daytime running light that is frosted and sharp. We have that big F-Sport series grill because this is the F-Sport LX600. And that's all piano blacked out with a really classy Lexus emblem sitting smack dab in the middle. As we get towards the bottom, we don't need as much of that rugged textured plastic, but we still have a little bit of a lip there underneath a tiny bit of chrome uh, that, you know, comes clean when you wipe it because the chrome's easy to keep clean. Then we have some parking sensors integrated into some active vents on each side of the grill. We have little headlight washers that can pop out as well as a front facing camera nestled nicely into said grill. Then we have a really big sort of divot vision line in the center of a really big hood. And those lines sort of carry all the way up to the driver. It's a really cool effect when you're sitting behind the wheel because you can see those vision lines on the hood and it just gives you that big presence. Okay, guys, as we're getting to the side profile of the TRD Pro, I found a little Easter egg as I was walking around. And that is on this little side amber marker here, if you duck down, you can see into the lens, it actually says TRD and those same letters, the more you look at it, also say Pro. So you can see TRD Pro in this little lens. I think that's super cool that Toyota does little Easter eggs like that, especially on a special vehicle like the TRD Pro, Pro Sequoia. While I'm down here, you can see that we have sort of like a camo textured fender flare on all four parts of the vehicle, sorry, all, all four wheels of the vehicle, and it does feel very textury. The wheel, we have a 285-65 R18 all-terrain tire on a very BBS off-road type wheel. I see the brakes behind it. They're not super massive, but they're definitely massive enough for this big vehicle. I would say they sort of remind me of like the RX F Sport style or size, but the wheel setup itself is absolutely huge, but it's what's behind this wheel setup that makes the TRD Pro very special. We have a Fox racing suspension setup. And even as I look past the wheel and tire setup, you can see some red TRD logos, everything's painted and it's kind of the reason to go for the TRD Pro is that suspension off-road 
type personality that this vehicle has. Okay, so as we get to the side of the Sequoia, you can really take in how big this vehicle is. Even the mirrors, which are painted black on the bottom and textured on the top, stick out very far and have a very big size to them. The truck itself, you can see how tall it is. I'm six foot one. It towers over me, especially with this, look, I have to undo my jacket to reach it, with this Tier D Pro roof rack. I would love to be putting a snowboard up there or a surfboard or just other lifestyle type things. And I think even with nothing on it, it does just look really cool and it makes the vehicle look even bigger. Now, as we're on the side profile, we will come across the only thing that makes me think this vehicle isn't totally off-road and that is these side step bars. So they come standard, there's no way to take them off. They are useful because of how tall the vehicle is. However, if you are gonna off-road, I'm sure this is gonna get a little bit in the way. However, on the bottom of these doors, I noticed the paint is thicker and has a little more of that rock guard texture to it and protection. And that is very off-roady, <laughs> in my opinion. So that does a really good job of that. However, I do think these side step bars would be in the way for any off-roading, but I don't know because I'm not that much of an off-roader. As we get to the back, even the passenger window is very huge and squared off. We have a couple body lines, nothing too crazy except for this little sweep right here that goes towards that back quarter panel. The third row window is a really good size as well because passengers can fit back there quite comfortably. And then even the gas door has a little bit of that angle to it because of the body lines. And I always think that's cool is when the body lines are sort of like through something that can move. So when you open up that gas door, it has like a big indentation to it, which is pretty cool. Also, we have another one of those little Easter eggs and let's see if it works and it does. So it says TRD Pro on this little amber light as well, which I think is pretty cool. As we go to the side of the elegant LX600. So now we have a 22 inch wheel with a Dunlop tire. It is definitely nothing off-road about this tire setup. And actually what's past it is a hydraulic system on this particular package. And on some of them, it's more of like an air ride setup. And all that is made for is smooth, adjustable sailing. So what I mean by that is you can raise and lower the LX depending on what you want out of it. And that hydraulic system does a really good job of it. In terms of brakes, again, it's not a super big brake. In fact, even on this F-Sport model, it looks like it's only maybe like a, I think I only see two pistons on this side with a little Lexus emblem underneath. Now, as we look at the side profile, we have the F-Sport logo nestled quite nicely on that front quarter panel. We have a painted mirror cap with some chrome. In fact, some chrome sort of circulating the whole window setup on the LX. You can see height-wise, it's probably a little bit taller than me, but not quite as much as that TRD Pro Sequoia. And we have the side step bar, which makes sense because of uh, we're not gonna be climbing over too many rocks with this LX. Although I have seen many videos of people doing that in their LXs. Sort of towards the back, we have a very square second row seating, again, for really good window type lighting and sort of a little bit smaller one as we go to that third row. Being the Lexus, let's see how it sounds to open and close the door. So really solid. It is a heavier door. There's no soft close on this one, but there is definitely some weight there. And because of that, you can really hear that thump as you close it. Okay, let's see if on the Sequoia, if Toyota cut any corners with how the doors feel. So it actually, that's actually heavier than almost ever any Lexus that I've opened. Yep, I would say both the front and rear doors are probably not more solid than any Lexus I've opened and closed, but heavier for sure and equally as solid. Okay, let's check out the back of the TRD Pro Sequoia. So we have these taillights that are actually very reminiscent of the Lexus taillight, just a little bit inverted, a little bit frosted red there. We have a standalone wiper at the bottom. I always like it when brands sort of tuck it away at the top, but that's okay because we have this glass that'll pop up. And once it's up, you can access your rear cargo area have your little dog back there that you can pet and feed when you're at the beach, or just have your surfboard sticking out the back, however you wanna use it. But that is pretty cool. I love that Toyota has done that. We have this old school, I don't know, I think it's old school Toyota emblem at the back, and it does have the blue inserts because, that's right, 
this is a hybrid, and that's how you can tell it's a hybrid. In terms of branding of the model, it's kind of blacked out. So we have S-E-Q-U-O-I-A at the bottom of that tailgate. This one's all blacked out. I don't know if those colors, or if those are always black or if they're body colored, but it does kind of give it a little bit of a stealth look, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have some textured plastic here at the bottom with some parking sensors and this little diagram telling us that the kick sensor is located uh, right here. And it actually even has a little, little emblem of where the kick sensor is, which is pretty cool because a lot of times on cars, I'm like guessing where it is. But even cooler than all of those things, we have a tiered exhaust setup at the back and it sounds really good. Okay, so let's open up the cargo area. Pretty smooth operation, a little bit slow, but that's because it's a really big uh, panel. It's a really big hatch. Uh, so back here, we have a third row that is currently folded down and it is raised up a little bit. It's almost on a little platform. But because of that, we have this really cool feature where we can slide said platform. So whether the seats are folded down or up, you can fold them, or sorry, you can slide them by using that handy dandy lever. Uh, and we have a tiny bit of storage underneath and actually this can come out. This is your sort of tunnel cover and there is a little sort of indentation there once you remove it. And then you can put that as like a shelf higher up. You will notice that with the seats up, which you can do from these switches right here, there actually still is a little bit of space here, not as big as perhaps the TX, but once you fold them a little bit further up, uh, you definitely have a little bit more. Now, I don't know how it's gonna feel with having, you know, the sort of not super level because of that little platform, but it seems to do a pretty good job. And I think overall, back here for a family, whether you're gonna have that third row up or down could kind of work for most people anyway. Okay, hidden feature time in the, the Sequoia. So that little tunnel cover that is at the bottom can actually fold out and put on one of these shelves. So you can have it so that you actually end up with a big platform when those seats are folded down and makes it a lot more usable. And same thing goes, we can actually just sort of lower it down and make it so again, it's in line with the other platform. And there's a few different sort of levels to that. So you can sort of configure the space back here for big things, like if you had a piece of drywall or something like that. Also, another little hidden secret, secret on the TRD Pro, something that we don't see on the Lexus or Toyota lineup very often is the sequential signals. So when your signal is on or you're doing anything that requires that, instead of just flashing, it does have a little bit of movement to it, and that's pretty cool. So as we get to the back of the LX600, the refinement continues. So on the taillights, we have the Lexus style taillight on each side, and it's connected by the samurai sword that goes across the LEXUS new emblem for the Lexus LX, and those letters are huge, the biggest that I've seen in the lineup. We do have an exposed wiper in the center of that rear windshield. I do wish Lexus sort of tucked it up at the top and that piece of glass doesn't open up at all. We do have the LX600 sort of in the bottom right corner. There is no F Sport logos on the back here. However, we do have this little rear diffuser at the bottom and it is a little bit of that textured plastic. We have some decorations on the side, some parking sensors integrated into said bumper uh, and really no exhaust that you can see. It's all tucked up underneath. All right, so in the trunk of the LX600, you will notice with the third row up, there is barely any space. And I mean barely, like, like that much. There's not much behind these seats when they're folded up. Probably for good reason, because I'm sure that third row has a decent amount of space, all things considered. However, you know, if you are gonna have anybody in that third row, just you're not gonna have much space behind it. When they are down, there is tons of space, in my opinion. And to do so, we're just gonna pull a few levers, push a few buttons, and they will fold down pretty much, well, actually, perfectly flat. And the base of the seat actually tuck into the floor, and then the back of the seat sort of goes on top, and because of that, we have a ginormous cargo area that is perfectly flat. And not a lot of SUVs can do that as perfectly as the LX. And then, once that's in there, you can still open up a little bit of storage underneath that fake floor, and there's like a jack and things like that underneath there too. Okay, so as we are getting into that third row, you're overwhelmingly greeted by this beautiful red interior with 
sort of the camouflage type texture to it. Once we get past that distraction, we're just gonna pull this lever and this second row, which is captain's chairs by the way, is gonna fold forward. We're gonna step on that running board that I talked about and slide into that rear space. It is a little tight back here from my size. My head is definitely touching just a little bit. There is a curtain back here or a hater blocker as we call it, uh, which is really rare for a third row. I think that's pretty cool. I like that the seat belts are red. I think that's also really unique and cool. I got a couple cup holders and I can, oh, I can recline a little bit. <gasps> that's cool, okay. It'll let me recline actually pretty far to the point of my head hitting the rear sort of like top of that uh, roof. So with that second row folded up, I actually have leg room. So I wouldn't want to be back here personally for a long period of time. I'm sure the two passengers beside me would agree but I can fit back here. Probably the most uncomfortable part about it is my head. My head is touching. But other than that, I could, I could be back here in a jump seat. I've been in a lot worse than this, that's for sure. Okay, sitting in the second row of the TRD Pro, it is very spacious. It is captain's chairs. And what I noticed is there's no center council. So even though it's captain's chairs, it's just carpet here, which is probably pretty convenient for having passengers sort of just cut through the two seats. As they, uh, as they crawl out. So that's pretty cool. They do have both armrests, which are pretty comfortable. A ton of space in this second row. I also noticed on the doors, we do have some shades as well. The doors themselves, uh, a little plasticky on the bezel uh, and the handle, but like I said, overall really solid. I do notice I have my own climate controls here, as well as USB-C and the USB-A, uh, and there is a wall plug. So there's even a 120 volt, 400 watt uh, plug there. So you could plug in, you know, some other devices. I don't think these seats are heated and cooled by what I can see, and there is no panoramic roof. However, a ton of space. Very squared off cabin, I would say. Okay, getting into the back of the LX, very similar to what I was expecting. Uh, and we just sort of slide in back here. Oh, let me get my headrest up. The headrest fold upward. So, uh, my head is touching a little bit here. Six foot one, not super surprised about that. It's kind of like a jump seat, I would say. It's very close to the ground. There is only two seats back here, which believe it or not does help because then the two passengers sort of have a little bit of breathing room. Uh, I do have some amenities, like I can charge my phone back here and I can power recline. Oh, I'm all the way reclined right now. It is tight, even with that said, like my legs are pretty close to, uh, if that second row wanted to recline, they're gonna be sort of on my kneecaps. It would work in a pinch, but I would say the LX is probably more made for cargo back here than an actual usable third row. And I don't even think, I don't even think you could do a child seat back here, not that you'd want to, but I don't think it has the anchors or anything like that. All right, so the second row in the LX is a bench. And even with the bench, from sitting in the Sequoia to in this, it feels smaller, which is crazy because the, like, the LX is a big SUV still, but it does feel a little smaller here. Cozy, because there's a ton of amenities. Like we have heated and cooled seats for both of these side passengers. We have dual zone climate. So this passenger and this passenger both have their own climate controls uh, and heated seats controls. We have a couple USBs. Uh, no panel roof on this one either. Uh, however, the doors are super solid with a lot of high quality features like Mark Levinson, as well as a really grippy handle for when you get in and out of the vehicle. And the doors are definitely a little bit smaller than the Sequoia that I noticed as well. I do see I can access the front glove box from back here. It's close enough that I can do that. And I have a center armrest that's super heavy and solid with some cup holders in it. And there's some cup holders in the door as well. It's comfortable seating. They're very soft seats with a very soft leather to it. A little bit darker of a red color. Overall, very comfortable. I would call the second row in the LX to be not spacious, but comfortable. And now the front seat of the Tier D Pro. And all I have to say is, oh my goodness, am I gonna ramble on for a while in here. So getting inside, as I've already mentioned, the seats are super gorgeous with a camo and a red and a, a red steering or a red seat belt, a little bit of red on the door panels and that blends into the dash. And on the dash, 
we have that Heritage Grill style Toyota emblem, which is really cool, right in front of the passenger. And each letter is actually sort of like trimmed around by red, which is also pretty cool. Uh, what I noticed in the cabin is there is a lot of textures and layers and details all over the place. For one, this steering wheel is perforated all around from head to toe. At the bottom, it says TRD, and that's sort of like behind this little piece of glass. And it's got the red strip in the middle, which is for race cars and race cars only, and also any TRD Pro or off-road vehicle. And that came from, you know, the likes of needing to see a visual line of where your steering wheel is. So I think that's a really cool, nice little touch that Toyota did here. Even the center console has a ton of different layers and textures. It almost gives me like a, a brushed metal vibe, but it is plastic for the most part. The cup holders open up uh, really easy from this massive flap. And even in the bottom of those cup holders, that texture sort of continues, which is really cool. In the center armrest, there's so many layers to this. There's levels to this. So we open the top one. There's like a little notepad, post-it note type one. Then we can slide this bigger shelf, which also you can keep stuff on even when you slide it. And that gives us like a quick access into the main compartment, or we can lift up the whole thing, get it out of the way. And in here, I have a change holder. This is like one of the first cars I've seen in a while that has a change holder. So you got your dimes, your nickels, your quarters, your toonies, your loonies, if you're from Canada. Uh, and then in here, we have more levels to stuff. So we have this little sort of fence around maybe your coffee mug holder. Then we have a shelf, a shelf, and a shelf, along with two USB ports, one USB-C, one USB-A. On the rest of the center console, console. I sometimes say console. People in the comments let me know that. We have a wireless charger that sort of faces you so you can put your phone nicely there. The shifter has that red stripe and there's it's almost like a layered shifter which is really cool. It activates by putting your thumb on the left side of it and it does say TRD also sort of underneath that with a nice little shift boot. Again, a really good firm shift. There's nothing worse than like an off-road vehicle that when you go to put it in drive, you like press a button or like slide a very gentle switch. Like this is a shifter, if you know what I mean. Then we have our brake holds, our pano view, a switch for our four ways, which is like a pretty hefty switch. Not a bad idea, car manufacturers, to have a hefty switch for your four ways because sometimes you're not gonna know when you need them and you don't wanna look for them. You wanna know where they are. Also, you'll notice we have a locking differential, a rear locking differential. And this truck, and how to do that is that switch right beside the four-way, so don't accidentally hit that. And how to do that is you would essentially lock that rear diff, and you can have it in too high. So again, not every truck, uh, definitely none in the Lexus lineup, can you actually drive in too high. So too high with that locking diff, and you could probably you know, kick that back end out pretty fun. Uh, even though that is not recommended, especially by Dustin Mason. And then we have our multi-train select. It's also our drive mode, tow haul, crawl control, MTS, all of those things sort of dial here, which works pretty well. Above that, we just have our climate controls. So heated and cooled front seats, as well as you know auto climate control and things like that. Then we have the newest Toyota interface on that big screen up front. I'm not gonna get too, too much into detail there, but it is really sharp. It's super wide and super tall. So it is just this big glaring sort of screen in your face, which has lots of info and that's pretty cool. Uh, but also we have another really cool screen on the MSD display. So on here, depending on your, you know, where your foot is, there is a couple cool gauges. There's the iForce meter, which is the turbo, and then the max meter, which is the hybrid. The driving experience is exactly what it sounds like, is you're gonna feel that electric power first from the max system. And then the iForce sort of builds the turbo boost and that kicks in after, and it gets the, gives you a really linear power to this power plant and it shows you all that there like i can actually see my battery level right now on the max system uh, which is pretty cool then we have just some customizable sort of like gauges and stuff like that depending on the mode you're in now i will say even in sport mode it doesn't change the suspension so sometimes people say with the trd pro is that suspension is really solid and stiff especially when you're going over puddles and stuff like that because it's made to take a beating, and because of that, it has a little more oomph to it. And the different drive modes does not change any of the characteristics of the suspension. They're, they're a standalone system that isn't adjustable. But it does change things like throttle response and shift control and stuff like that. So we have Eco, Normal, and Sport. And depending on which 
Mojer and the gauge cluster will sort of customize itself to that. Then on the steering wheel, we can control so some of the things that we see on said gauge cluster. Uh, and these are pretty physical buttons. It's not any of the soft touch stuff. There's like a left and right and up and down. I'm not gonna get too, too into it here. Uh, and it even shows you things like, you know, your trailer control and stuff like that, which there is a trailer braking uh, switch over here, right underneath the TRD on and off button. Over to the left, I have things like my heated steering wheel, my parking sensors, but we also have the TRD light bar. And I love that it's branded. It actually says TRD light bar on it. In terms of seating position, the dash is a little smaller, which I like, reminds me of the G-Wagon. Very off-roady, I can see lots of vision lines for that hood, which is super cool. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over here. I know it's not full of amenities, but for an off-road vehicle, it really does have a lot. Okay, so sitting in the front of the LX600, I do feel like I'm home with some really nice layout and some high quality materials. Everything from the brushed aluminum, uh, which feels like brushed aluminum, in the center to even how high the council, council sits and sort of where my arm is placed when I'm in it. It almost makes me forget that I'm in such a big vehicle. Even the door when I go to shut it has a nice grip to it, has some soft leather uh, injected plastic materials. Uh, and overall is just pretty calming for being such a big vehicle. It's not very overwhelming in here. I do have a very wide screen at the top, uh, which isn't much of a distraction. And underneath it, we have a separate sort of more square screen uh, that's also touch and shows us some of like the interior features or what you know some of the electronics are doing, et cetera, et cetera. I can lock, sort of lock the, the center differential and turn off the traction control, as well as change, you know, some of my some of my different drive modes and things like that. And it will change things like even the suspension, uh, as well as, you know, the shift points and throttle controls and stuff like that. Also shows me a little G-force meter. The shifter, super solid and also has a really nice sort of movement to it. Center armrest can open from both sides. It's not super big in this package. Um, it, some of them have like a cooler in the center. This F-Sport one does not, uh, but it's usable enough. We also have a little bit nice display here on that front MID display. I always call it the MSD, MID display. And a little change holder to the left with a few other buttons like, you know, bird's eye view and things like that. So overall, there's not a ton that you need to worry about here. There is still some off-road features, even though it's a Lexus. So, we can put it in an off-road mode. It gives us like a gyrometer, which shows us angles and can tune the vehicle itself to, to perform well. And we can switch from low to high and do so all while looking and feeling quite good because it's Lexus. And on the TRD Pro, we have also a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with hybrid max meaning there is an extra little boost to the already boosted power plant, which equals really good fuel economy, a really smooth drive, and also a ton of linear power. From people that have driven it, everybody sort of says, when you see the electric motor sort of kick in and transition over to the turbos, it feels exactly as you think it does. It's almost like one gear is ending and the other gear is kicking in. And that begs the question, who is which vehicle for and why did I compare these two seemingly different vehicles to each other? Well, the answer is there isn't a ton of vehicles that play in this sort of marketplace. Ones that are full body on frame have, you know, a luxurious interior with amenities, but also a rugged exterior perhaps that has a little bit of off-road capabilities as well. In terms of which is which, well, the TRD Pro will dominate that off-road you know, sort of segment with the Fox racing suspension, that locking rear differential that you can put it in, you know, too high. However, the amenities of the LX weigh it and still have a little bit of that off-road capabilities because let's be frank, not everybody is gonna be taking their TRD Pro, Pro Sequoia off-road. Instead, it's just gonna look like it can go off-road, but still spend most of its time on the pavement. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Is the Sequoia TRD Pro an off-road vehicle or is it just a luxury vehicle with a little bit of gear? And is the LX, 
you know, comparable enough to it, even though the price points are a little different. Big thank you to the new owner of the TRD Pro. Thank you very much for letting us use it in this video today. And if you liked this video, make sure you pop over to Performance Toyota's channel to check out some more Toyota videos. I'm Justin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.